Namaste friends. I am coming to you again from my kitchen to talk about Yogananda's 9 day cleanse. I have to apologize because I promised that I was going to vlog this journey and share more with you along the way but I was not able to do it this time. I am actually recording this video on day 10. I know it's a 9 day cleanse but I just couldn't get enough time to record or do this. I was always trying at night time and I was too tired or I didn't have enough time that particular day. Just the cleanse itself, the juicing and the shopping and all of it was adding on to whatever I regularly did. So I apologize for that. Maybe next year when I do it, I'll take you along more and show more footage of everything I do on a daily basis. But I wanted to make this video because uh, I wanted to let you know that I did in fact successfully complete the 9 day cleanse. In fact, I'm still not out of a cleanse. I'm still just beginning to come out of it. So I wanted to answer a few questions that I've received over the past many years, not in the last 10 days since I posted the video but generally that people wonder about fasting and detoxing some of it is specific to Yogananda Ji's diet uh, some of it is just general tips on fasting and detoxing so I thought I'll also let you know that I have in fact completed my cleanse and share with you answers for some of these questions which you might find helpful again I'm not a medical professional so this is all just from experience and just general knowledge on how the body works Everybody just has to do what's right for their body and what feels good for them, healthy and whole for them. So first of all, let me start by saying you might be wondering, how do I feel? Do I feel any different? I certainly do. The most significant differences that I feel increasingly as I go through the nine days are, of course, there is, my skin is very soft and smooth. It's not like I have, I do any kind of skin care uh, regimen or anything I do for my skin, but I just, can notice that it is visibly very soft and supple. My eyes might look like the same, but they are very clear. I just feel this great clarity in my eyes. My meditations are deep, uh, deeper than usual, just the sense of freedom from inside. I don't know how else to describe it. Um, I do not actually need as much sleep as I used to need before I started the cleanse and my stomach feels very clean. These are just the positive changes that I've been feeling. Certainly meditations are deeper and that is something that I've noticed every time. Every time I do this cleanse, I try to make sure I'm practicing Yogananda Ji's energization exercises at least once every day. I'm receiving some sunlight. I'm able to walk outside and feel uh, the heat and the light of the sun, uh, receive energy that way. And I also make sure I'm trying and meditating more than I usually do. Those are also some of the reasons why I haven't had the chance or the time to record these videos these last nine days. Now I'm finding some time because I'm coming out of it. So these are all very important because as I said, the objective of this fast is not just physical health. It is breaking that psychological dependency on food, but also realizing on a deeper level that the source of prana is God. We are receiving energy from a divine source. We are not just living by food alone. That is the essence of doing a detox such as this that Yogananda gave us. So moving on, I just wanted to answer a few more questions uh, that people often wonder about. Uh, not just with this particular cleanse, but fasting and dieting in general. Now, what are some challenges I had this particular time? Because as I said, I've done this fast, I would say at least 12 times in the last 10 years. Some years I've done it twice. So every time the journey is a little different. This time it was relatively smooth. I can say I did not cheat. Uh, one of the things that Yogananda Ji did allow is a uh, few almonds you can add to your diet on a daily basis. He uh, recommended that they be ground into almond meal and add it to orange juice that you have at night. Now I didn't have to do that during the fast but the cheating that I did, I don't want to use the word cheating, it almost has a negative connotation, that's not what it is. But uh, one thing that I did have to do is, I think one, some days I had to eat an apple because the citrus and the acid was just a little bit much for me. And uh, I feel apple is the closest fruit that I could include. I didn't want to include grapes because they're so sweet. I didn't want to include bananas or something uh, that is more starchy in nature. Uh, anyway. Apples are not part of the diet, but I did uh, have some. I'm just sharing this with you because, you know, we just have to make things work the way our body is asking us to. Otherwise, we just drive ourselves crazy with too many rules and trying to fit into them. Uh, even the fast I did, which was relatively smooth for me, might, might 
be very very difficult or somebody else might find it too, too taxing to have such a rigid set of rules so you know you don't want to be suffering you know tapasya is putting yourself through some amount of self discipline that you normally wouldn't but you want to be able to do it with a sense of joy that is the purpose of a detox like this now moving on what are some of the the challenges that i face this particular time certainly one thing that i started feeling which is very common i'll start with this the fasting headache uh, this is a very common symptom not just with yogananda ji's diet but with any a uh, juicing diet cleansing even water fasting whatever you do uh, a lot of people have this headache that is very particular to fasting i don't know scientifically i have not looked it up on the go on google maybe i should have but i didn't i don't quite exactly know what is happening or why you get that headache but uh, i can tell from experience some of the things that work for me are not physically straining yourself not exerting a lot when you have those headaches typically i get that headache when i wake up in the morning it just feels groggy in some way i just feel a certain lack of energy to get up from the bed i have to say i felt those symptoms on day 3 and day 4 but after that it normalized you know the last few days i have not had any such feeling at all and certainly it did not impact my meditation i know for some people i've heard that because of this fasting headache they find it hard to meditate now also i have to say again if you are a caffeine drinker on a daily basis if you drink tea and coffee regularly it might be a little more challenging for you i know that from people that do it and it's harder for them to fast so if you are going to do a detox diet like this i would recommend that you go caffeine free for at least a couple of weeks before you try i'm not a caffeine consumer on a daily basis i do have caffeine occasionally like a cup of coffee a couple of times a month or sometimes not at all for a couple of months so i don't have that issue so all that to say i don't have particular solution for that but i know from experience just in most cases if you just stick through if you're able to push through that fasting headache if you're just able to move on almost certainly it will resolve or otherwise if it is too debilitating then think about what you want to do whether you want to include certain foods in order to remediate that or uh, you know uh, you know maybe even have a tylenol I, i again i try to avoid medication that's another thing that i wanted to say during this fast even just routine medication because my i'm just putting very specific things into my body so i avoid things like having tylenol is what we we call in the us in india most often people take paracetamol or you know acetaminophen i think it might be known uh, by different names in different countries so you know just headache fever medication i don't take that i do take allergy medication because this is spring and there's a lot of pollen in the air so i get uh, sinus blockages when i wake up in the morning and i tried to wean myself off of them during the fast but you know i could just feel i was so grog you know my nose was blocked in the morning so i had to do that now uh, the other thing i faced this time which i faced few times in the past uh, past and especially the very first time i tried this diet it was very very difficult for me is the acid for some reason was causing a lot of discomfort in my throat i would wake up in the morning with a very very scratchy throat now it could also be compounded because of the fact that i have inflamed sinuses most often and that could be a reason why i have that particular symptom i don't know if everybody feels it or faces it and uh, you know i have just pushed through that as well that is generally my first tendency because i'm also during doing this detox as a spiritual purification so often times whatever challenges i have i cope through that as a way of purifying my own body mind and soul now in this particular time when i had that what i did in order to remediate that or to cope with that was have a little bit of licorice tea licorice uh, again in india i don't know what it's called in hindi i think it's called yashti madhu that's what it's called in sanskrit in uh, tamil which is my mother tongue it's called adi maduram and uh, it's just it's a root that it's is in powdered form what i do is i just make a, a tea out of it just water brewed with a little bit of that root and i was having that tea and that really helped actually my throat uh, became quite fine the other uh, challenge that i've often had and i had this time too with this uh, detox is teeth sensitivity 
because you're having a lot of acid oranges lemons grapefruit so much acid and it's going through your teeth uh, you know it's possible that you can corrode your enamel and you can start developing teeth sensitivity it's not with everybody it depends on how healthy your teeth are this time i had a little bit of that and uh, one thing that I do, which is what is recommended that, it, that you do if you have this problem, this is actually easier to work with. What you can do is just use a straw. Uh, do not add lemon to your salad or vegetables when you have them, but rather add it only to your juice and use a straw and drink it quickly. Do not have the juice linger in your mouth and also uh, either gargle your mouth, wash your mouth, or have some warm water right away after you drink that juice. That makes sure that acid is washed off from your teeth. Uh, what else? The other thing is just bloating in general because, you know, I'm eating a lot of fiber uh, as part of this diet, the raw vegetable, the cooked vegetable, you know, because raw vegetable, you know, I tend to have larger quantities because I'm generally hungry during this diet. So it's a lot of fiber to digest. So my stomach is a bit bloated than usual. Again, it's very normal. I don't think there is any issue that I've faced because of this symptom. All of this starts to sort of normalize and become better as I keep doing this fast. For after day seven, day eight, day nine, all these symptoms got better. I'm speaking to you right now on day 10. Of course, I don't have any of these symptoms, more or less. Uh, the other thing that I wanted to mention is the laxative. I actually realized this time how helpful the laxative is. I used Swiss Chris and I also found out that Swiss Chris can be purchased in India. It's a herbal laxative. I would actually recommend uh, wherever you are located in the world that you try Swiss Chris. It has a particular effect of cleansing in the stomach and it really flushes your stomach out. And as Master suggested, increase the dosage as you go through these nine days and that is very very helpful the fasting in my case sorry the the laxative in my particular case i was noticing towards the end of the fast it was really helping cut a lot of cravings when my stomach would be flushed out when i had such a heavy bowel movement i realized that i was no longer having those kinds of cravings that i would if i did not have that so there was some kind of connection there uh, that was very helpful in doing this fast successfully. Anything else that I want to say? Um, Epsom bath. This is also something that I wanted to briefly mention. Master recommended that every night, I think, during these nine days, we take an Epsom bath. We put Epsom salt in a bathtub and we soak in that because the skin absorbs magnesium through uh you know, topically through the surface and Epsom uh, salt is very, very helpful for detoxification. Now, I don't actually live with a bathtub and it's not something that everybody has, even in the US, let alone in India. I know it's very, very uncommon for somebody to have a bathtub in India. I did do something with Epsom salt. I do it every time, which is I do something called floating. It's a sensory deprivation tank. Uh, if you, you can Google what I'm talking about, you can go to a place. Um, I had to pay $60, $70 for an hour where you can lay in a pool of water that is saturated with Epsom salt. Uh, so I do that as part of this cleansing diet. It's called floating. It has many, many other health benefits also. Now, again, I don't think, I'm not sure if that's available in India, but in India, if you're watching this, one thing you can do, Epsom salt is inexpensive and widely available. And you could, if you're somebody who does bucket baths, not shower, because that's more common in India, you can dissolve that salt in uh, water, in that bucket bath water, and you can take shower. I'm sure as the water passes through your body, there's some amount of absorption that will happen and it will be helpful because, again, uh, I think if Master added it to the diet and it's important to receive magnesium as part of this detox, I'm sure there's a meaning to it. Now, the last thing I want to talk about before I sign off is this whole idea of weight loss. I know this is not particular to this diet or Yoganandaji's techniques. This is something that most often people are people have as a goal, as an objective, and they do something like this. And I'm not an exception. I always hoped that I would actually shed some pounds. I don't mean like I want to go do crash dieting or I have an obsessive goal with my weight. To be honest, I did not measure my weight. I don't generally measure my weight. I don't bother about it all that much. It's not something I don't even know how much I weigh and it's been very long since I weighed. If I were to take a guess, I would say I've lost about five to eight pounds in these nine or 10 days. 
this kind of weight loss is something that you would easily gain back as you get into a normal diet that's pretty normal so um, I don't think it's necessarily the most effective way to lose weight. Master does call this the reducing diet because he says there is weight loss possible through it. Now what I wanted to say is there are a couple of things that I wanted to say. If weight loss is your objective, if you are trying to lose weight by doing this diet or any kind of cleanse when you're juicing or when you're going on raw and vegetables and cooked vegetables and things like that, one thing I would recommend is as you go through the diet and as you're losing weight because your metabolism is slowing down, um, depending upon your age, because I started doing this fast when I was, I don't know, 25 years old. <laughs> and so I have a lot of experience even going through different cycles in my metabolism. As I've aged in the last 10 years, I can feel my body loses weight differently. When I started doing this fast, at the end of it, my pant size would reduce by, you know, would my pant, my waist size would reduce by two sizes and I would still feel very slim and, you know, fairly vital. Even now I feel vital and strong at the end of the fast, but I notice I lose more weight from my arms, my upper body than actually losing my belly fat. And that's because your metabolism is shifting with age, especially with women, it is even more significant. You will start losing muscle mass, which is not what you want to lose. You want to lose subcutaneous fat. You want to lose the layers of fat in your body. That is what uh, is holding you back energetically, not the muscle mass, which is actually strengthening, which is important for us. So how do you make sure you lose the right kind of fat and you don't lose strength because if you don't if you just try to reduce weight with a fast like this you might lose weight but you might also lose strength so in order to avoid that uh, energization exercise obviously that's the first thing do energization exercise multiple times a day just this act of tensing and relaxing is very very helpful if you're not familiar with what I'm talking about you can easily google or learn from somewhere the other thing that you can also add especially if weight loss is your goal is do some strength training I try to do push-ups uh, during this fast I don't have uh, any other you know, I don't go to the gym or something like that, but I do push-ups or other exercises, especially during the fast, it's more important because if I don't, I lose more upper body strength. Uh, I don't want to lose that. I just want to lose the subcutaneous fat, you know, the layers of fat near my skin. That's what uh, is ideal for us to lose. I don't want to lose muscle mass. The second tip I would give for weight loss is also when you come out of the fast, I'm on day 10 and I expect to keep doing this for many, many days is come out of it very, very gradually. Like for example, the way I come out of this fast is I start including nuts. I included almonds and walnuts today and a lot of pumpkin seeds, which are which I just had a bag of pumpkin seeds uh, at home, so it was very easy for me to do that. I started having soups. I started add, adding salt and seasoning, which have been missing very badly for the last nine days. So I was craving for that. But I'm not eating dairy. I'm not eating grains. I'm not eating sugar. I'm not eating any refined starches. I'm not adding any of those yet. I'm adding a, other fruits as well. I'm adding more apples because I'm a little tired of all the oranges and the grapefruits. I'm still adding a little bit of lemon in my daily diet and I feel very full. I feel very satisfied. So if you're feeling satisfied that way, why come out of it? Uh, just gradually start adding. Um, one thing I plan to do is I just soaked some um, whole green mung beans or other lentils, whole masoor dal, unpeeled. Uh, I plan to sprout them rather than because I want to get some protein. Uh, but also I want it to be easily digestible. I don't want to go, you know, I don't want to feel heavier. So I'm going to sprout them for a couple of days and either cook those sprouts or eat them raw with a salad. So I'm going to start to include some elements like this. I don't know how many days I'm going to go, you know, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> I doubt if I'll be recording one more update like this. But again, if weight loss is your goal, if you want to retain these health benefits, come break this fast very, very gradually. Uh, somebody said it's very easy to do a fast. The harder thing is to do uh, do is to break it gracefully. I'm, it's a better quote than that. I can't remember it right now. Um, but 
it is important it's very very important if you want to feel the effects if you want to retain the benefits of this detox do not break it indiscriminately even if your life gets busy even if you get cravings even if you've been waiting to dig into that piece of cake or just have a bowl of rice uh, just wait for it you know try and um, the one thing i just cannot do anymore is the vitality beverage not because i don't like it it's just work you know running the juicer uh, buying fresh ingredients every day it's hard i cannot do that much citrus so i just start replacing it with other things i do reduce the amount of juice also because it's a lot of sugar when i'm now starting to eat proteins and fats i don't want to have so much sugar in the form of fruits so i just start balancing and playing with it there was one year when i actually did the 9 day fast I'm not kidding you for 18 days uh, i think i even did the vitality beverage for 18 days it was many years ago i don't remember right now so sometimes i do push myself a lot when i feel really vitalized and filled with energy i just keep going on and on um, certainly that's not how i feel this year and i don't think i'll recommend it what is probably better is start including nuts they are a great source of protein and also fat because you know you can get dry skin dry hair because you've not been eating any fat for 9 days so start including almonds uh, either grind the almonds or soak them in water and peel them and eat both are good ways of uh, making the almond very accessible to the body again you know mung beans or things like that you can gradually add even vegetables have a lot of fat sorry vegetables have a lot of protein like green beans or green peas or edamame edamame is green soybeans so all of these are also helpful so just be very very conscious when you plan your 9 day diet also remember do not schedule you know because of what my life is like you know i often have lunches or dinners with people and uh, in occasions or potlucks or things like that that i'm part of so i had to be very conscious even if i was going to be part of something i to make sure i'm not expected to eat i'm not going to eat there i'm not going to participate in that kind of a setting even after 9 days until i feel ready maybe in a week or two i will be i don't know it doesn't matter the longer i take the better because if i just start going if i just go to a potluck and i just start eating this and that and just indulge because i'm no longer doing this cleanse it doesn't help your body will immediately come out of it and you will start losing the benefits and not only that because your metabolism is so uh, has uh, been brought down so significantly if you start consuming these those foods immediately you'll gain back all the weight that you lost you'll be surprised even just by eating normal food for a day or two after the fast you will your weight gain will go up like this it's not a bad thing but i'm just saying that in case weight loss is your goal then break the fast very very gradually add some strength training do not forget to energize and throughout this cleanse you know treat it as the way to train your body to receive prana to become more in tune with prana as cosmic energy that's the object to of it so with that i'm going to end this video uh maybe next year i'll take you to the my shopping trip which is what i was hoping i would do this year i just didn't have a chance to I'll show you my juicer my juicing the vegetables i'm making each day and all of that maybe it's fun for others to watch that but i don't know anyway this this year i think i've shared all that i could uh, share with the spoke with the spoken word so hopefully you found this helpful feel free to reach out to me anytime if you have any questions on uh cleansing or fasting especially um all about yogananda's teachings because that's the one i have studied so god bless you